Welcome up! In this episode, we will talk about nationalism. Coming up. Hello, I'm Understanding Politics, and in this channel I explain political theories and debates to students as well as curious and passionate people, just like you. Okay, this is going to be a difficult video for you and me, because it can challenge your understanding of reality and community by simply doing a little reasoning that involves a bit of history. The video is hence structured in two macro sections. In the first part, we will try to answer to the question, what is a nation? And in the second part, we will present different streams of interpretation of nationalism based on the answer to this question. Yet, you must realize that my perspective is biased and you cannot expect a completely objective point of view on the topic due to our inherent subjectivity. All I can say to back my perspective is that it is supported by scientific knowledge and history. In the end, you can choose not to agree with me, but I will have some compelling arguments for you to deal with. Here we go. What is a nation? It is a concept used to refer to a group of people sharing some specificities, including a common origin, but also language and culture. Or, at least, that is what we are usually told. Etymologically speaking, the word nation comes from the Latin word nazio, and refers to the concept of being born, bred, raised to a common blood type. The origin of the word implies that the concept would be then some sort of ethnic group, a race or common origin for a group of people. Ethnicity is in fact a term of Greek etymology, referring to the common origin of a group of people. The correspondence between the two terms was made by the Romans when they assimilated the Greek culture. So, from here we learn that while the word technically has the same roots of ethnicity, over time its original meaning was added more layers of complexity, including a cultural dimension. Evidence of this is the use of the word nationality. When we show our passport, we prove our nationality. I'm Italian, so from Italy. Straightforward. In this sense, nationality becomes synonym of citizenship. So anyone with Italian citizenship is part of the Italian nation. Yet, this contradicts the first initial layer of ethnicity and common origin. Let's take one of the most famous black Italians, let's say Mario Balotelli. He is Italian, but he has not the common origin of other Italians, because he has Ghanaian origins. Another challenge to this idea of nation arises when observing some independent nation-states with territories once part of empires. We have Moldovans, for instance. They are often Romanian speakers, but from an ethnic standpoint, they are a mix of different peoples that lived in the area. They often have a Moldovan nationality, while most of them have a double Moldovan and Romanian passport. We have Kosovars, ethnic Albanians or Serbians. They often speak Albanian, but do not have an Albanian passport. We have Magyars in Romania, often Romanian citizens, while Hungarian speakers. We have inhabitants of South Tyrol in Italy. They often don't speak a word of Italian, only German, but they are Italian citizens. From this we learn that nations are not states, because states often contain multiple nations within their borders. Yet, the United Nations is called like this even if the organization only hosts states. Clearly, as said in a previous video, it would have been odd to have an international organization called the United States. It would have been confused with the United States of America. To recap, the more precise word to indicate a common origin would be ethnicity. The more precise word to indicate being part of a political community would be citizenship. And the more precise word to indicate the set of institutions governing the people living in a specific territory would be state. Yet we keep using the word nation to refer to these ideas, while intending a group of people with common origin, sharing language and culture. Why? This brings me to the second macro section of the video. What is nationalism? The answer is that nationalism is an ideology. This political ideology relies on the social construction of the concept of nation. If you ask me, nations do not exist, they are not a real thing. But you can create nations out of thin air by creating a series of customs, including national celebrations, flags, an anthem, and even a national language. 
This perspective on nationalism is called constructivism. For constructivists, including historians as Rick Hobsbawm, Ernest Gellner and Benedict Anderson, nations are imagined communities that are realized with the intent of creating a sense of belonging and community among the people that live and reside in a certain territory. A competing interpretation is called primordialism and was shared, among others, by the German idealist philosopher Johann Gottlieb Fichte. He believed that blood and language were so strong that nations extended beyond borders. He was a serious advocate of a German unification before Germany was a defined nation-state. On the one hand, he was a patriot that motivated the German unification, and on the other, his takes on nationalism inspired Nazism. Nationalism is hence a right-leaning ideology resting on the idea of conservation of the purity of a group of people whatever we mean by purity. Yet, you certainly know that from a biological standpoint there are no races and humans are all the same. Well, many other researchers gave nuances to these two interpretations of nationalism, namely primordialism and constructivism, they are the core of the dialectical opposition on the meaning of nation. Now I will give you the example of Italy. Italy became an independent state in 1861, after the state of Piedmont and Sardinia, ruled by the Savoia family, led its army to conquer the whole peninsula, from Sicily to Quarto. Before 1861, there was not an Italian state, there were several microstates and colonies of the French and Spanish empires. There was not an Italian language, even though we claim that Dante Alighieri, all the way back to the 13th century, invented Italian as Volgare Fiorentino. Dante was not even Italian. He was a citizen of Florence. The statesman Massimo D'Azeglio famously said, we made Italy, now let's make Italians. Italians that did not know the Italian language were literally made through the first public schools. The state then adopted a flag. The colors green, white and red were originally taken from the civic militia in the Transpadeno Republic, an unofficial government in Milan, while the Triadic Division dates to 1797, when the Cispadin Republic in Modena, established by Napoleon, designed its flag. Later, the Savoia House emblem was added. Some celebrations were created. The culture was already there. Painters and artists of the Renaissance, writers from even before. Cristoforo Colombo was technically never Italian. Marco Polo did not speak Italian yet we reclaim them as part of our national heritage. Have we been scammed? Not entirely. We are in some way Italians as long as we decide to be. Also, if you maintain a detached understanding of your nation and nationality, you will not lean towards discriminatory nor aggressive political positions. On the other hand, the more we consider the membership to a nationality as a defining aspect of our identity, the more tribal and aggressive towards other nationalities we will be. I am not saying you should give up aspects of your identity, I am not. But you should put it in perspective and understand that your identity is composite and does not reduce to nationality. Have I convinced you? Certainly now you know what nationalism is. As usual, all sources are linked in the description of the video. The lecture is over. Thank you for watching.